And away we go on a Friday. Man, it's nice when a plan comes together now, isn't it? Kenny's here. He's in one piece. We're Let's excited. Go. That's right. We're excited. And Kenny, I have a bonus for you. You're 2-0, not 1-0. Seattle shouldn't even get on the damn plane. So no last shot. Night was a BOGO? No, nah, I already got Big G. Buy building one, get a, one free. Big G's built a pine box for Pete Carroll. Give him all the points you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Barry statue, 2-0. You're at least going to give him a pack of chewing gum? <laughs> I'm a punch in the face. I can't stand <laughs> Pete Carroll. Um, now we got a lot to talk about. I'm excited. This is exactly the show I wanted to walk into. And, and what, what was satisfying about last night, not just the win, the way it went down. That game, it played out exactly how I thought it would have to play out. You turned it into a damn street fight. It was grimy. It was dirty. It was uncomfortable. And I don't think either team played great. That's the beauty. This wasn't you with an A-plus performance and the Chiefs sleepwalking. I don't think either team was great. Lions had their problems on offense, problems with a turnover, problems with mistakes. Chiefs, yeah, obviously, some drops. But you know what the biggest thing was to me? And Rico, we can get we can go 80 different ways. You you've littered this sheet with stuff. Your defense is the story. Everybody was so scared about the remade secondary. And my belief was it was going to be a clear upgrade. And I believed enough of what held up over the last 10 weeks of last season would translate. Mm -hmm. You know what the Chiefs couldn't do? Much anything. Sure, Mahomes is a wizard. Mahomes scrambled a little bit. He made a couple throws. That's why he's also an MVP. Yeah, exactly. But could they run the ball? No. No. Could they sustain drives? No. The last seven possessions for the Kansas City Chiefs. And winning time. And I, I know this is your and Detroit's victory lap today. What? I can't say. I told you. That secondary had to go out there and get an interception in order to get they this did. thing done. That was a hell of a play by Branch. Branch got it. And I, the second he got it, I'm like, pick six. That's gone. Goodbye. Yeah. The defense was so good because I often they forced Kansas City to do things that they probably shouldn't have done come up with trick plays at crucial times. You come up with the trick plays because you don't believe your regular plays can work on a defense. you got to fool them. you got to think them, make them think that you're doing something else. That's what let me know that pressure is coming off the edge, even though you had a right tackle. What I don't even know what he was doing the entire game. Well, he's getting away with it, I, what he was doing. Right, I, kept, I was like, man, this guy really has cat-like reflexes that he knows the snap count. Not only was he leaving early, this is Juwan Taylor, the right tackle. He's not only leaving early every play. Rico, he wasn't lined up on the line. No. He was a yard deep sometimes. Now, again, when Terry McCauley points out as the rules expert that it's illegal, when the broadcast acknowledges it, here's my thing. There's no world I live in where the Lions coaching staff didn't go to the refs. There's, I just won't accept that they didn't. Right. The refs simply weren't going to call it. But you know what? See, I think and you overcame it. Right there. You needed that to happen because a past Lions team is crying and complaining and saying, hey, look at what's happening. They may have been in the referee's ear. I didn't see any of the defensive players bitching and moaning. They went out there. They did their job. Play. Even though the entire game this was happening, the Lions kept their composure. It. I saw something that I've Really never seen. You know, this you, know, you know what part of it is? I would credit C.J. Gardner-Johnson with a lot of that. Yeah. Guy comes from a Super Bowl team. Dude's a winner. He's a dog. And he's going to woof. He's going to talk. But he's a leader. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get guys from winning locker rooms and you're building one yourself, they add to it. When you get guys that are winners and you bring them to a bad locker room, they can get swallowed up by it. The Lions won the game. I think you and I are saying the same thing. They won the game because of who they are. It's not about having all these superstars. It's about who you are. Is it perfect? No. Does this wide receiver room still scare me? Yes. But the culture they've built, who they are, that's why you won the game. It is. Because it didn't go right for you. It wasn't perfect. The ground game wasn't outstanding. Kansas City was using five defensive linemen last night. They, You didn't have the ability to just dictate. But when you needed it, Keep, they just kept chopping. <laughs> they just kept chopping that wood. See, 
And this is and why, that last drive, they pounded them into submission. It's why you didn't need to bring in a guy like DeAndre Hopkins because Correct. I think that he would have been complaining to the media, I didn't get enough touches. Kansas City took St. Brown out the game. After that touchdown, he really became a non-factor. You didn't hear his name that much, but the team, as you say, Mike, just kept chopping. They kept doing what they had to do. Offensively and defensively, they brought pressure to Mahomes. And honestly... If it was any other quarterback, you probably would have had some sacks. You would have had a lot more uh, tackles for loss in the backfield. Mahomes just kind of wiggled his way out and picked up first downs. But this team went out there, played together, through the adversity, on the road. Shout out to the Detroit fans who went there. That was incredible. Because, yeah, I thought it was going to be a smattering of people, a little bit of blue. Oh, no. Detroit represented. It's why I'm telling you, if they get this thing rolling, that, that no one's coming to this building and winning. No one. These fans are starved. And they just, look, I'll tell you one thing, too. And I look, guys, I'll throw the number out. 248-539-9797. I know I don't really need to throw the number out. You're already ready to rock. I imagine you woke up feeling different today. That's kind of what I wanted to ask people is like, you know, David told me this is what it's like when he found God. They just woke up different today. The world feels different when your team did, has done something they've never done before. Or if you were a doubter. Guys, if I told you they went on the road and held Patrick Mahomes to 226 yards passing, you would have told me I'm a crackhead. That's exactly what they did. If you would have told me the only person on the Chiefs would be able to run the ball worth a bleep was Mahomes. You'd be like, mm, I don't know if I buy that. And then chips down in Arrowhead, down late. It was the defense keeping you in it with stop after stop after stop. And you would go on a drive where you would physically break them. Yeah. You'd go, I don't know if I can buy that. Well, here's the thing. Not that you need this because, you know, what? I expect you to be on a whole nother level today. Like you said, this is that today's that different day. Unlike what David said, I, I think of no. It David as, didn't say that. That oh. was me saying that David said it. It was a joke. Oh, okay. Because I, I was gonna say or Lions fans today, the moment the win happened. No, I was gonna say they just they, 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 that see, Holy Ghost language spilled out of people last night. No, see, I was gonna say it's that that morning after you you're no longer a virgin. <laughs> you called the game. You also said something else, Mike, that I thought you were exaggerating about. No, hold on. You cannot just go, just go right past what you just said. That is amazing. How does, he, how does he go from Holy Ghost language to Kenny saw a boob? <laughs> please, please complete the circle for everyone. You said how bad Kadarius Tony was. I told you he was human excrement. I told you. I thought. You, I told you he's the worst New York Giant in history because he's a horse's ass. I would have cut him after the second drop. I, I was like, is, does he have money on the lines and the no. points? Did he take Rico. the points? Rico, he's a knucklehead. This guy is just bad. I felt. I literally felt sorry for him. The idea the that end. the Giants turned him into Darren Waller. I mean that that's the caterpillar into the butterfly. So so lions, I, I, I am by no means am I saying that's well, why you won. I'm gonna tell you something. I just feel bad. Like, I'm not gonna let it this bother me. This guy stinks. Not gonna let it bother me. Why hey, is he not in the XFL? No, not gonna let it bother me. But I'm gonna address it now, and it's no secret. I like him, and he listens to this show. But I did not like what Mike Tirico had to say. You can take that asterisk stuff and keep it. The NFL is one big asterisk. You know what the Lions did last night? They played without their best corner. You know what the Lions did last night? They played without a weapon they desperately need on this offense. You know what the Lions did last night? They played without a couple of defensive tackles. I'm not going to do a power ranking because every week you will play teams that are without stuff. Yeah. I don't need to hear the asterisk. That's it. To me, it's disrespectful. You can, David, you play it on a bump back if you want. It was so unnecessary. I don't need to hear it. it just, just like the family cam. Hmm. Didn't need that. It was so unnecessary. And for a person who I don't like, Collinsworth kind of brought it back and said, hey, 
in this league, either you're a thumbs up or you're a thumbs down. Right. You win or you lose, and that's what you're judged by. I don't know where Tariko got that one from, but I just didn't need it. As I was turning off the TV, I was like, wait, that was. And Mike, just- no, Mike is keenly aware as an Ann Arbor resident, as a guy who's lived out here for a quarter of a century, he's keenly aware of what that game meant to people. Didn't need that comment. Now, I'm not going to let it bust up my day. Not. See, I, see, I just took it as that comment was for the Kansas City fans to make you feel hey, a little bit better got, about oh, the game. I got something for the Kansas City fans. Hey, David, on you. <laughs> You're number one, Kansas City. Here's a giant foam finger for you. I it just I felt vindicated. <laughs> I put blind faith into this deal like David puts into the, the dude living inside of a whale Corinthians deal. Jonah. Bl- Jonah. The, the Lions are my Jonah. I put blind faith in them all offseason. I kept saying we're winning this division. We're winning a home playoff game. And, yes, I expect to go to Kansas City. Yes, I am so pumped they delivered, but I'm happy for you guys. Who gives a damn about me? It's the whole Listen, idea we get to have this celebration right today and we get to enjoy 10 days that I don't give a damn point forward. I feel like everything we talked about, Rico, they are that. But the thing is, if that's the case, even though he said it, why do you care what Tariko said? I don't. I brought it up because I know the listeners are going right. to bring it up. No, so no, no, I'm not you. I'm saying for the, it shouldn't bother you because this is one of those scoreboard moments. I, I don't care. Hey, this is a city of the aggrieved. And you know how Detroit works. They play the victim like nobody else. If the Lions, I feel like Rocky, if the Lions can change, then you, the fans, can change. Indeed, Rico. Okay? We all can change. You can stop being aggrieved. You can stop getting angry over that and letting that comment take away from your evening because, hey, you're the queen of the ball right now. Uh, we have a lot to do today. Your phone call is going to be a huge part of it. We got the prop bet casino. We got the picks. TJ Lang, another non believing scumbag. TJ Lang joining us at three o'clock. Guy works the sidelines and pick the Chiefs. What a POS. Somebody get a tobacco bottle for him and a bib. We'll have him in here at three. <laughs> <laughs>